The fate of health care reform may be left up to the Supreme Court. Justices are scheduled to take up the case early next year. But that doesn't mean attempts to influence the outcome have ceased. Republican lawmakers and conservatives have called for Justice Elena Kagan to recuse herself, citing her previous role in the Obama administration. And Justice Clarence Thomas has been urged to recuse himself by Democrats because of his wife's work to fight the law. FSRN's Michael Lawson reports. For the newest associate justice, former Solicitor General Elena Kagan, conservative wariness over her role in a potential Supreme Court health care case was part of the confirmation process. Republican Senator Jeff Sessions during Judiciary Committee discussions of Kagan's nomination. If confirmed, uh, Ms. Kagan would be the decisive vote, perhaps, in that case. Thus, it's critical that we know prior to voting on a nomination whether, as Solicitor General, she participated in administration discussions about that. The scrutiny continues. House Judiciary Committee Chair Lamar Smith sent a letter to Attorney General Eric Holder last week expressing concern that Kagan's role in planning a legal strategy to defend the law had not been fully revealed. Carrie Severino, chief counsel to the Conservative Judicial Crisis Network, argues in an examiner op-ed that Kagan received privileged information on the law in her role as Solicitor General, based on redacted emails obtained through FOIA requests. Severino was not available for comment for this story. Associate Justice Clarence Thomas's conflicts of interest have also received scrutiny from progressive groups and Democrats. Thomas's wife, Virginia, has actively lobbied against health care reform through her group, Liberty Central. Justice Thomas was also criticized for failing to report his wife's income from conservative groups on financial disclosure forms. Democratic Representative Louise Slaughter of New York co-signed a letter with 51 other Democrats urging a Justice Department investigation into violation of disclosure laws. The fact is there are only nine justices on that Supreme Court, and it certainly should be a given that a family member of any of those people lucky enough to be a Supreme Court justice should not in any way involve themselves in matters that will go before that court. Despite any opinions about the two justices, the decision to recuse themselves is theirs alone. Justices should recuse themselves when there is an appearance that their impartiality may not be guaranteed. The Progressive Justice Advocacy Group, Alliance for Justice, is calling for reforms to the recusal process, including written responses to recusal motions and review of recusal decisions. Danielle Franco Malone is legislative counsel for the group. These decisions should not be left to the individual justices. There's a basic kind of precept that no person should be able to be the judge in their own case. But that's what we allow Supreme Court justices to do right now. While Franco Malone says the justices are unlikely to recuse themselves, some legal experts have suggested the partisan calls for recusal may harm the view of the court. Franco Malone says Thomas's failure to report financial information, as well as his relationship with conservative contributor Harlan Crow, do more damage to impartiality. I think that it's really the conduct of justices like Justice Thomas have created the appearance that uh, a political agenda is being advanced, not the calls for recusal. Partisans are not the only ones calling for transparency in the health care case. A consortium of media outlets sent a letter citing the historic nature of the case to ask that cameras be allowed in the hearings or that audio recordings are released sooner. Current protocol stands that audio recordings of arguments are released at the end of the week in which the case is heard. Michael Lawson, FSRN, Washington.